Yo. What's going on? It is the fourth Saturday of the month, which means it is stand-up comedy time. Yes. This week, the winner of this week, I'll get to more on that in a second, is an audience with Billy Connolly. This Man. is the one of the comedians that uh, has done the best for us on the channel. And we've done like a little clip of this, but can't wait to get the full one Man. in. It's it's because I would say when's the last time we touched any Billy Connolly? Probably pool, maybe a year. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, aside from the ones that I was able to unearth from the uh, depths mm -hmm. of copyright claim hell uh, this year in the summer. But other than that, we physically have not sat down and watched any Billy Connolly in about a year. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, dude, I cannot wait for this mm -hmm. at Me all. <laughs> Before we get in, yeah, at this point of the recording, the Greg Davis one is actually leading the poll. But unfortunately, when we took a look at it, the standout special itself is like complete garbage in terms of quality. And I just could see the people, uh, the keyboard warriors coming out of the woodworks for it. So yep. we figured we'd just go with the second uh, best one and give y'all quality. And it's good. I, I, hey, I'm I'm here. I'm always here. Uh, since the old lady on the bus, I am oh, here. Yeah, I am here for Billy Connolly mm -hmm. and the wildebeest and the wildebeest <laughs> and the yep. uh, the Glasgow uh, uh, terrorists. Ter terrorists. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, dude! Uh, I can't wait. Enough talk. I, Let's yep. get in. Let's do it, man. Three, two, one. You don't sort of go eight o'clock and into it. You sort of relax and scratch your arse and read the paper and look out the window. Well, this is me at my work. This, this is me, I'm doing it. I'm not in a yop scheme. This is what I do. <laughs> Easy, isn't it? Well, I've thought a great deal about what I should say to you and how I should conduct myself tonight in front of you. And it's, it's been a real problem for me. Because usually I I, I, um, I relax into the more profane language very early yes. in the game. So I think I could do it quick and relax. Fuck this! I love that. What we've learned about uh, folks from Glasgow, that sounds about right. <laughs> yep. I was like, it took them long enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And yes, uh, the first couple minutes are cut out of it, but... It's either this or nothing. So sorry, y'all. Yeah. Yep. I'm I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh yeah, man. Come on. Yeah. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> is this like a quick belt in the banjo? Run! <laughs> right now that we're at home, I thought it would be nice. I, I can hardly hit the V. You know what I mean? It's because I come from a from a place where people. I swear, I've sworn all my life. You see, I, I swear like all the time, and, and I think it's rather good language. People say it's it's a it's a limited vocabulary. It makes you swear. Well, I don't think so. See, uh, and uh, because my vocab, I know at least oh my god, about 127 words, <laughs> <laughs> and I still prefer fuck. <laughs> Oh, let, me, let me see if this is going fast. Like, if the... Oh, I had it on 1.25. Sorry, guys. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. This is left over from when I was trying to look at the Greg Davis one to see if it was, like, at a different speed. I just totally forgot. Got it. Got it. I knew okay. something was off. It's like, what is going on? That is a very fast delivery for Billy Connolly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay cool <laughs> ah, sorry y'all all right <laughs> y'all could tell uh, we're real right yeah this is it this is it oh my uh, god okay cool uh, <laughs> oh shit you see i've never found the english equivalent wait a minute for fuck off. <laughs> wait that was a minute. ringo ringo yeah okay cool i'm not going crazy i was like Okay, cool. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'm here for it. Hell yeah. God. Yeah. All right. And, and it isn't go away. Because <laughs> go away kind of dissipates, doesn't it? <laughs> go away. So go away. Shoo. Shoo. Go away. Go away. There's no conscience. Like, fuck. 
fuck off! <laughs> works, you know. And, and you never read, fuck off, he hinted. <laughs> <laughs> so what well, I thought I'd tell you, in case, <laughs> in case you want to ask me something, <laughs> I bet you don't now. <laughs> now that you know the answer. <laughs> Well, every time I open my eyes, I'm looking at one of my heroes. It's like a nightmare. <laughs> I did this once before, you know. It was in the year that the Scotland qualified to play in jail. You know, Scotland always qualify. You have to think of the year. I think it was <laughs> 74 or something. They qualified. We were playing in Germany, and the guy who was supposed to make money for them kind of uh, ripped them off. The Scottish football team, that is. And they ended up uh, by being given a sort of a six-month loan of a Vauxhall. <laughs> 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 Jet set stuff, isn't it? <laughs> you loan a Vauxhall for six months. So, the, <laughs> Willie Ormond, who was the manager, asked me to go down and entertain the team, and it was hellish. It was just this room full of Dennis Laws and Billy Bremner's. I did the whole thing with my eyes shut. I was <laughs> open my eyes. God, it was the best laxative I've ever known. So, <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to tell you a bit about myself. You probably know a lot because I've kind of become the darling of the chat shows. But I, <laughs> but I should tell you, I lie a lot. So, some of it wasn't true. I've made myself very windswept and interesting as the years have <laughs> rolled on. That's the way to do it. <laughs> just Good. just little, ah. little white lies every now and again. Make it won't yourself, come back to bite you ever. Make yourself interesting. I love that. I love that. Dude, how many celebrities are there? Like, I don't know. Was that Madonna? Like, dude, who, like, where is this? I don't That's know. Crazy. I don't know. Yeah. All I've recognized so far is Ringo Starr. Maybe, have you recognized more than just Ringo? Yeah. The, before Ringo was, uh, I keep forgetting his name, the guy who played, I want to say, Super Mario, the original uh, uh or or who framed roger rabbit that guy oh okay okay uh, I, and i forgot his name i, I shouldn't because he's a great he's a great actor but yeah man that's crazy okay cool all i'll say is that particular movie who framed roger rabbit we should probably add it to the list you haven't seen it or you have <laughs> i'll leave you there okay cool <laughs> oh my god all right <laughs> Because I was born a sort of fart. <laughs> you know. I, I said, I've tried everything to be exotic. You know, and I've fought being plain all my life, but it keeps coming. But I always look... Pl when I buy something expensive, I look as if I stole it, you know. <laughs> so that's how I look about me. You know, people give me presents, you know. Like Cartier glasses, and the police go, Where'd you get them? <laughs> they stole them out of a car. So it's... It's weird, you know, I've got this mark on me that says nothing. <laughs> and I don't know where it is. I've, God knows I've tried everything. But it's, I was born in Anderson in Glasgow. And it's a, sort of down at the dockside there. And uh, I don't remember it much because we left when I was about three or four. And I was brought up in Partick in Glasgow, where Partick Thistle originally came from, the football team. Partick Thistle FC. I say that because most Englishmen think they're called Partick Thistle Nil, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're always good for a laugh, you know, Partick Thistle. And, uh, yeah, what can I say? I was brought up as a Catholic in Partick, and it was OK. Uh, <laughs> I've got A-level guilt, you know. And, uh, yeah. Every time I interfere with myself, I think I'm going to hell, you know. Uh, yeah, it was an okay education for everybody else. I think I spent most of the time watching pigeons screwing in the reef. The, the, the sort of that was it. That was the education. I, I, but I was very lucky because there was full employment on the Clyde, you know, and uh, 
that was the way of Glasgow then, the sort of the shipyards, the schools opened their doors and the shipyards opened theirs and everybody poured in. And I became a welder. I was actually becoming an engineer and joined the wrong queue. <laughs> and it's the truth. Because you know, there was everybody had jobs going like engineers this way, Mr. Hughes, and I joined the wrong line and became a welder. <laughs> and I started being an apprentice welder without even knowing what a welder was. I didn't know what you press to make it work for Christ's sake. The stuff. Eh, that was it. And I joined the Territorial Army to make myself a bit more exotic. <laughs> uh, I did. I did. It was the parachute regiment, and I got my red berry, and I I looked like acne. <laughs> I had my uniform and I got my wings and everything. And we did an exercise once. It was a complete and utter waste of time, as the entire Territorial Army is. We did an exercise. It is, it's a dreadful waste of time and money. <laughs> oh, I swear, I mean, we did an exercise in Cyprus, all as paratroopers and in the Carina Mountains with my gun. And we, <laughs> we parachuted out of this plane. And I, as a matter of fact, I parachuted out of the first plane I was ever in. I, had, I jumped out of the first bloody plane I was in. Aye, it was the ninth flight, I think. Something happened to one of the engines and we had to land and everybody was shitting themselves. I said, I'm great, we're gonna land! <laughs> that was that. The, I landed in Cyprus, I sat on a brick and it hit me on that bone there. Oh. The coccyx. <laughs> I just about overtook the aeroplane. <laughs> Landed again with a lump on my bum, which has never really gone away. <laughs> and did the rest of the exercise like a giraffe having a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was full of little moments, you know. And we chased, the parachute regiment chased the Green Howards through the mountains for ten days. And we caught one. <laughs> There was thousands of us, <laughs> armed to the teeth, bayonets down the trousers, and it was great, real poser. Everybody looked like Rambo, climbing to... <laughs> At last I'd become exotic, and we caught this poor bastard. <laughs> and he worked in the same shipyard as me. <laughs> oh, wow. He was a territorial too. It was great, I could have sneaked up behind him in the canteen and saved the country a fortune. <laughs> Yo, High Sights 2020, man. <laughs> you know? I love that. That's yeah. awesome. What the <laughs> hell are they doing in Cyprus? I love, like, what? I get it. It's, uh, dude, that's so funny. Uh, uh, Billy is the master. He is the, the, the master painter of every scene he's talking about. Yeah. Like, he, I can imagine everything. He paints a great picture with his words yep oh man mm. and to give you for those of you who don't know what i do that that was that, that must include me really i've never really understood what i do but i've all i've been intrigued for many many years since i was a wee boy with a uh, the way ordinary people behave i've never found famous people awful interesting it's one of the great letdowns of my life but when I found ordinary, just, just plain Joe Smiths, I found they do the most incredibly exotic things and make me roar and laugh. If I could give you a wee example, my brother is, uh, th when he told me, I thought I was going to hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was really, I mean, I just, it just took my breath away. You see, I spent many years working in the shipyards, roaring and laughing at extremely funny men. And wondering why, when I put the television on and watched a comedian, it didn't make me laugh the same way. But this, this is roughly an idea. My brother is a postman. This is the truth. He's a postman, right? He's because uh, about Glasgow doing his post, giving people letters and stuff, as as his postman's want. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, they were pulling down buildings in the area where he delivers his letters. You know the way they pull down slums and all that. And they had a rather unique way of doing it in Glasgow. The first thing they did was they went into the building, the tenement, you know, and they've got maybe eight doors, sometimes ten or eleven doors, on the, the various houses, depending on how many on the landing, you see. Because sometimes there'll be two houses on the landing with two rooms and a kitchen, 
and a wee one in the middle with just one room. That was called a single end. And they've tried to, to get rid of them. And they, in, in one way it's a great idea, in another way it's not such a good idea. But anyhow, they took all the doors off the buildings first and they made a fence with them. You see, round, round, and then they pulled the building down with this fence of doors. And my brother, one day, he went up. <laughs> he's, a, he's a postman, right? <laughs> and he went into the... <laughs> in, in a party, where I come from, he went up into the building and he went to... Or Mr MacDonald, whoever. Went to... <laughs> and it says, Campbell, on the letterbox. So he, he knocks to ask Mr Campbell where Mr MacDonald has gone. And Mr MacDonald opens the door. Hi, oh, hello, son, what is it? Oh, here's your letter. It's your door. It's, oh, yeah. He said, I found this door. <laughs> oh, yeah. He says, aye. It was, in a, it was in a fence along the road there. I thought, I thought it was a cracker, so I've, I've nicked it. <laughs> so, so what he's done, this guy, he's out for a walk with a dog, right? Is it just an ordinary block? I mean, you couldn't write this. Right? He's out for a walk and he goes, God, jeez, that's a great door. <laughs> He's away home with the door, right? <laughs> so he's taking his own door, because it's night, right? He's out with the door, so he's out better, right? So he's taking the door off his own house <laughs> and laying it again, then taking the good door and put it on. <laughs> so that's a cracker, right? <laughs> this is what they do with my own door, and he thinks, the lavvy needs a door. He, he's got an outside toilet, and the door needs... Right, so he takes his own door. He takes the lavvy door off, and puts his own door on the lavvy and then takes the lavvy door and puts it back in the fence. <laughs> so, so nobody can, can, can take a fence at all. He's the fence. <laughs> He's got a new door and so has the lavvy. <laughs> he said, and everything went great until in the morning he went down to the lavvy and he found that burglars had broken into his toilet. <laughs> <laughs> And I've often wondered what the burglar thought. Going, right, this house will do. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What deprivation! Bathroom. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> the robbers, like you said, he must have broken him. Like, there's nothing to take. Leave something. Poor man is already all his last. Like, all he can do in this house is shit. Yeah. Like, damn. Hard times. Uh, Hard yeah. times for us all. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh shit. But that's that's awesome. right, man. It's like I knew it was going to be funny because one. Uh, from uh, a, uh, someone I was talking with from Glasgow. It sounds pretty accurate. Uh, and two, uh, like what he said earlier, it's like he was he was laughing from other, uh, you know, construction workers or welders or whatever, blue collar people, yeah. then went home, turned on the TV, and wasn't amused by any comedians. Because, you know, real honest people Ha are the funniest people ever, you know? 100%. You can attest to that. See, yes. You've been a construction worker. I've been a night shift worker. <laughs> Those two groups right there, funniest motherfuckers Dude. you'll ever meet. Dude, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And 98% of the stuff cannot be reiterated. Or not, not reiterated. Like, you can't tell that in public. Right. <laughs> They're all walking HR violations. <laughs> yeah oh man yeah absolutely love that man mm -hmm. me too can you imagine the leave the burglar leaving them a couple of bob <laughs> and so that that's that's roughly what, what i've tried to do and I, i've often looked at, at people eh, and thought my god because I've been kind of obsessed with sex as well, you see. <laughs> it took me an extraordinary length of time to lose my virginity. <laughs> oh, God almighty, it was, it was ages. I won't even tell you because you'll talk about me. It's, <laughs> it was 
was, it was a long time. I was tattooed first. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was so long. I had to do it eventually for the sake of my sight. I had to go and... <laughs> For, for reasons of, oh, visibility, I, oh, I was going mental, I was becoming a funny shape. <laughs> it, was, it was just awful. I, oh, the whole, the whole thing was, oh, Jesus. And I, I used to look at people and wonder how they did it, if they did it. Say, now, he probably does it. <laughs> she probably does it. As a matter of fact, he probably does it her. <laughs> I wonder how they do it. This is the perfect opportunity to bring back a phrase that I have not said for so long. This guy can look at anybody and say, This guy fucks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this girl fucks. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty much what he said. That's pretty much what he's calling out to people. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Uh. And hopefully by the time this bit is done, he'll be I'll be able to say to Billy, this guy fucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's been a long time. Good to good to see you dust that that little slogan off. Yeah. I oh. only saw it because uh, today I was looking through some of our older reactions. I put it together a compilation, and I just it was it reminded me that I had said that, so yep. I had to find an opportunity to <laughs> dust it off, take her for a spin. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh God. <laughs> now, wonder if everybody had been telling me the truth, you know? <laughs> Did you really? Or were they were they taking the Mickey? I mean, if I try, if I go all the way, I'd go, get yeah, piss off! <laughs> <laughs> to practice on things, you know? <laughs> I've never had a dog or anything. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yo! <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Love Billy Connolly. Oh man. Love Billy Connolly. <laughs> it's weird, you know. I used to read things and sweat a lot. <laughs> and I used to look at big fat people, huge obese, gigantic people. I said, I bet he does it. And I bet she does it. And I wonder how to do it. And I saw a man <laughs> being interviewed on television. And he was in the Guinness Book of Records for being the most greedy person on earth or something. I mean, the man! He was from Texas. And he was the fattest. He was actually kind of lying down <laughs> to be interviewed. He was looking over his waistband, you see? And the thing, I thought, I looked at the fly on his trousers. I was like, that was vast! God, it's like, it's like Cyril Smith's trousers. <laughs> and I wonder, where do they sell big Y fronts that size? <laughs> or do they get them custom built, you know? <laughs> so I was looking at this and I thought I was just going to count the buttons. I was about 47 buttons. And, <laughs> and I thought, well, it just waves a huge big woman as well. She was talking away. Oh, it's wonderful to be in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, well, I reckon, do you know? <laughs> I reckon the Neil. Because <laughs> when you're Scottish, you, you, you know how it feels to have a wee willy sometimes. <laughs> it's not, Scottish people don't have wee willies. Sarah, I wouldn't, I'm not guilty of such racist thoughts. <laughs> but I've been on holiday in Aberdeen. Oh. You're like a sumo wrestler. Oh. You're going swimming at Aberdeen. <laughs> Come on. You're always like a baby's one. There's a wee point on it. You feel so stupid when you look at it. And the other bit underneath. 
a marble pouch. <laughs> it's like a walnut shell. <laughs> I'm sure he's, this, this man from Texas was a bit like that, I should imagine. I mean, his wee willy show and, it, and his wife would be, her stuff would be under here too. <laughs> so they must sit there like sea elephants up on their knees. Saying, right, Nelly, okay. Great, <laughs> right, grab an armful. <laughs> right, up we go. <laughs> and this wee person appears. <laughs> And a huge big armful of stuff wobbling. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, more. <laughs> right, now. <laughs> and it all falls off the bed. <laughs> Fills the whole room. <laughs> we were like, left a bit, left a bit, go. <laughs> so that's kind of roughly. <laughs> What I think about. I mean, my. Th <laughs> uh, <I've laughs> uh, it's a scary place in his mind. It's, it is. Good it is. God. I, I, uh, I thought, I, I just thought they were in this whole Cirque du Soleil thing. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Jesus! Oh God! Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> no, really. I know. I seem to. I seem to see things. The, the people don't just take... I was in Los Angeles, and this is the truth. There was a sign, and it said, to the Braille school. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, who is it for? <laughs> and I thought, why don't they do all road signs in Braille? People stop and go like that. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> And it's, it's odd, I must say. But I've always... There's something about a ordinary... I don't understand very much. I'm not saying love me, love me, I'm thick, right? <laughs> but there's a lot of things that my brain won't allow me to understand. <laughs> you know, because they're so incredibly boring. <laughs> and God knows I've tried. Especially with politics, and you get two pages, you go, oh, bollocks, who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> I mean, that's how I've, I've become a kind of anarchist, you know. I think roughly the desire to be a politician should bar you for life from ever being one. <laughs> I was watching them, to, don't vote, it encourages them. I was watching, do you watch them? God! I mean, isn't that awful? But anyhow, there's. I, I tend to look at it slightly different. And I, I look at singers on the telly, and I look at Scottish singers, and I think, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and you see, and I'm, I'm a Scottish person, right? You probably noticed. <laughs> yep. And I look at these Scots on telly, these, they're sort of singing shortbread tins. <laughs> <laughs> It's the whole nation, they're singing about this garbage. <laughs> oh, the mountains over here and the hills over there. Sun is in the river and I'm roaming in the gloaming. <laughs> Barney Purple Mountains and the, and the sun is going up. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! I guess there wasn't a Jerry Cinnamon or Louis Capaldi around that time, or Biffy Clyro, uh, or not. Yeah, but uh, wasn't he by then a musician? 
I think he, he was, I think he was. I think he's uh, that his band's been thrown at us a couple of times. We never got around to mm. it, but yeah, I can, so he can talk on this. Yeah, that's what I'm like. You know what? Oddly, he is in the right place to talk about that. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like okay, fair enough, fair yeah. enough, fair enough. Ah. <laughs> uh. I don't even begin to understand that. Because the folk music is actually wonderful, the real, but they avoid that like the plague in order to sing this stuff. And it's all written here in London. <laughs> with strange wee men who have never seen Scotland. And one of them got found out about five years ago. He wrote a song called The Blue Misty Hills of Tyree. But if you've ever been in Tyree, it's like a bloody billiard table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the misty blue hills. <laughs> oh, the time. <laughs> and there's this never ending line of Highland weird people. I mean, I'm not saying the Highland people are an amazing race of people, lyrical, nice people. But there's a section who keep turning up. On television in Scotland, <laughs> with Brian Island shirt and a space in the teeth, <laughs> and the wee badger handbag there, <laughs> mountains and rivers and Bonnie Morag and the Roman and the Gloman, <laughs> and it's a, it's, it's a very strange affair. And then there's the Gallic ones. You've probably seen them. They say hello to you all the time when they're singing. Hello, <laughs> hey, This is a song they do when they're mashing up the Harris Tweed to send it off to them. Say, why are you wearing a Brian Island shirt? <laughs> It's absolute nonsense. <laughs> and we seem to produce in Scotland a kind of religion that's very strange too. It's the most patronising thing in television except for the weather. <laughs> it's Wincy Willis here. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Wincy Poo. I was just thinking, they, they have your television treat you like you're four years of age. Now here's the weather. <laughs> this is the country where you live. <laughs> and this is a wee cloud. <laughs> you probably saw I really feel brassed off when they do that. They stick clouds and lightning on the board. You don't need to do that! I don't know what Cloud looks like! <laughs> Just tell me, I'll understand! <laughs> I, mean, I mean, what if that carried on to the news? <laughs> Today there was a massacre of. <laughs> 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 running off the desk, you have to behave yourself. I can't get it. But anyway, I was sitting, that kind of singing, you know, the women, women sing kind of weird up there. They've spoiled a lot of great songs. You know, Robert Burns wrote some real crackers and they spoil them with that strange <laughs> you know, way of singing. Because ordinary people sing okay. Not really. <laughs> And the whole thing is organised by people who've got second names instead of first names. Crawford. <laughs> Crawford, have you seen Finlay? <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> They're alien, the surname clan have taken over. <laughs> Campbell, have you seen Finlay? <laughs> oh, he was with Crawford and Torco. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> And the women dancers are great, you know, they're all giving it a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun, you know, winsome and buxom, and the men are getting a bit. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> for me, it's a bit strange. <laughs> it's a bit like ballroom dancing's getting the same. Like people doing that. <laughs> in a Glasgow dance hall, you'd last about ten minutes. <laughs> An elastic suit or that, not... <laughs> what, what's that? And where's the Pasadobli? Nobody actually does the Pasadobli except them. <laughs> and drunk people on holiday in Spain. <laughs> so, and then religion, as I was telling you, now, religion's a real growth industry in Scotland. It's... The BBC religious department's got 14 offices. What do they do all day? <laughs> you can't hear the typewriters for the rattling of the rosaries up there. <laughs> so it's, it's very odd. And they've got this never-ending procession of wee men who come on at night and tell you how dreadful the world is. <laughs> and then in the most patronising possible way, Try to introduce you to God. Uh. Now, if there's a God, and I suppose there, there is, really. Because I've always, I've always thought, if you believe in God, if anybody believes in God, there is one, you know. And, and there's, there, it doesn't, it's not up for question. But these wee men, come on, and try and tell you. And the ones on, on the England on the, the Radio 4 in the morning aren't any better. They seem to have this never-ending line of people called Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> They'll tell you all about God in a strange fashion. Yes, I went to a football match the other day. <laughs> <laughs> and you know is the key, right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a football match the other day and... It was terribly exciting. I, I watched with bated breath. It was Tottenham Hotspur, I believe, they were playing another bunch of chaps. They were very, very good anyway, but... The game was rather exciting, and on the way home, I... I said to my son, Nigel Jr., I said... <laughs> Nigel, I said, yes, Daddy. I said... Did you enjoy the game, Nigel? Oh, yes, Father. It was super and terribly exciting. <laughs> Is that all, Nigel? Well, yes, Daddy. But, Nigel, didn't you attempt to think of it on a more spiritual plane? <laughs> Did Jesus play for Tottenham Hotspur, Daddy? <laughs> and, you know, in a funny way, he did. My radio's all covered in muesli. <laughs> it's got this sort of pebble dash finish. <laughs> I'm always eating my breakfast and swearing at the radio. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sort of furry looking radio. Like solid porridge. <laughs> it's great. I think that would be my radio too if I had to pull up with that with Nigel every every day. <laughs> oh god. Oh yeah. god. It's so it's so like relatable, you yeah. know. It, yeah. It, it's 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 regardless I I feel like I feel him because of those late night like well, who is that dude? Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. Joel Ols Osteen, man. That dude I I can't. I yeah. Can't. He's just he's the one. You know, I don't care about the fear mongers. At least there's passion out there. But yeah. Joe Osteen is like, give everyone a hug kind of mm. thing. I'm like, get out of here. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even wasting time. Man. <laughs> Him and who else was it? Uh, I, th uh, there's several. Uh, that There's, yeah. And you probably know more of them because they're out your way. Yeah. A couple of them were at churches that I attended. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Pat Robinson. Yep. Uh, uh, who else? Billy Graham. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's plenty of them. Oh, yeah. 100%. Over so I country. I feel where he's going with that. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, I get it. I get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to tell you something else about that. 
Why? <laughs> These singers, you know, in Scotland, they, they don't... You see, I like the way people sing when, when they go to sing it. You know, like at parties. Now, I've, the worst thing about show business for me is the parties, you know, because they're kind of boring. And, uh, I mean, I've been to some nice ones and stuff, but most, they're not as good as actual parties. <laughs> uh, like, I remember from Scotland, and I'm sure people down here, you know, working people all have parties and, yeah, unknown people going, yeah. And you have a, a you get a, a great deal of booze or whatever is your choice. And you... <laughs> you uh, uh, right, five minutes, Mr Connolly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be with you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No business. So. <laughs> I arrive here in a box like that. <laughs> Five minutes, Mr. Connolly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're here to entertain you. <laughs> I've started touching my willy. <laughs> it's one of my more, my more sort of disconcerting traits recently. <laughs> because I've been talking about people who touch theirs, and it has led me to touch mine. <laughs> and there's a strange comfort to be had. wiggle it about or anything. <laughs> you check it like you check your change or <laughs> credit cards or... Anyway, I think... I think maybe it's going to fall off as you get older. Like your hair. Perhaps when you're older you lose your willy. <laughs> Panic in your soul. Usually happens to men in the thirties. Happened to me and mine. We are lying in the bath, luxuriating, and you look down. And there's your first grey pubic hair. <laughs> That's your starter for ten. <laughs> it's, oh, and I thought, God, how awful. <laughs> Nobody told me about that. Because <laughs> you don't get, like, Grecian 2000 adverts for the guy. Because <laughs> the guy walloping it down the front of the jeans. <laughs> That's another thing, that's another thing I love, is adverts. I, lo I love that the, the, the lie. I, li I like lies on that scale, especially, because there's nothing wrong with lies, they're fabulous things. My God, I'm a liar for a living. <laughs> there's no one to take my word for it, there is no recession. <laughs> I am loaded. <laughs> but the Dow Jones Index, I don't even know who the man is. <laughs> Aye. Wouldn't speak to him if I did. So, what was I about to say? Aye. On a Saturday morning, in the papers, you get these adverts for things that they obviously can't sell. <laughs> and the people have gone, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it <laughs> What? <laughs> you know, a combined cigarette lighter and coat hanger or something. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know those kind of things, you know, hat and shoes to match. So, yeah, you know the kind of thing, you know, open neck flannels, so, yeah, bowler hat with sleeves, you know the kind of... You know, people have a sort of ideas and they go, that'll take on! So, so they, I, on a Saturday morning they appear, trench coats! <laughs> Smart trench coats! <laughs> State size, and, the, and, the, and there's always a drawing. There's never photographs of these. There's always a drawing of, of uh, some other bloody coach. It's certainly not the one you're getting through the post. <laughs> <laughs> and they sell great things. I've always been tempted to send away, especially for the big slipper. <laughs> Have you seen the big slipper? <laughs> I think these adverts are for people. Who, they're aimed at, at a section of the community who don't go any place. <laughs> they watch the telly all the time. You know, well, I suppose your trench coat, you can watch telly in your trench coat if you like. 
But it's a one big slipper. <laughs> and you put your two feet in it. <laughs> and you watch... And you watch television. <laughs> in your slipper. And you... And you can... And each of the family can have a slip in each. <laughs> I was always going to buy two. <laughs> I was going to buy a pair and leave them in the fireplace. <laughs> when I'm going out at night, because a burglar comes in. Who wants to hear my chance? This man <sighs> predicted modern advertising. I Bro. mean, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the ad that you probably saw just now is probably something that is aimed towards you if you're chronically online. And it, it's like a moderate equivalent of a Snuggie. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, when he said smart trench coat, I was like, what? <laughs> what? What? Well, I was like, 1985? What are we talking about here? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure that could exist right now. Like like Sky Mall. Like, yeah. remember Sky Mall? Yep. It, it, it's like... Uh, has these uh, dog water filters that have the dog stand up on it, house shoes with headlights, uh, yeah. shoes that aerate your lawn. Yeah, like what the <laughs> fuck? Like some of these things, like I, I, I have fallen down the QVC rabbit hole, oh. which it, it stands for something, whatever. It's home, um, it's a home, it's a shopping channel. Yeah, it's, a, in it's America, just a home least. shopping channel, and it's garbage where they put there's just absolute trash but you want to fall asleep quick that's what you look at yeah. I, I that's the original for me that's the original asmr type content oh and, yeah and or and or antiques roadshow oh i yeah. would fall asleep to some of that yeah but, yeah but the the qvc thing always presented a problem that they fixed that never existed before. You never, like, yeah. I, like they would, they would promote like a vacuum cleaner. Like, don't you hate when you vacuum and your pet catches on fire? Like, what <laughs> the fuck? Like, well, it won't happen with this one. And it's like Jesus Christ. Like, like, like. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. <sighs> My favorite was uh, the Betty Crocker bacon fill. You remember that? The what? The Betty Crocker bacon fill. Well, you basically what you do, it's it's a it's a dome pan that has like a, a, a as a thing you put on top with like that creates a ca a cavity in there, and you bake like a separate cake, and and then you could fill that hole with like you know fruits or ice cream. You or, could make like a bowl out yeah, of a bacon. Bowl. A yeah, out, not out of bacon, out of you know cake. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. When you said bacon bowl, I'm thinking, I'm thinking bacon. And I'm like, the fuck? You probably yes. could do that like, with it. Like, make a bacon weave out yeah. of it. You no, probably I was could. Like, that would be a game changer. Yeah, yeah. But that, that was one <sighs> of my favorite products of that time. And oh, my God. I was going to say earlier, it's like, I kind of miss the days where advertisers could lie to you. That way they could be a little more creative. Yep. Now nowadays you have influencers pushing products and actually testing them out. And right now the thing is the TikTok shop, like that's clogging everyone's for you page. It's kind of ruining TikTok right now because TikTok's trying to co compete with Amazon. But they test the product, make a, a TikTok out of it. Mm. That's that's the uh, model equivalent of whatever Billy was talking about. Yeah. Yep. Jeez, man. <laughs> the Just... slipper with two. I love that. Just yeah, for for two feet, and he got two of them. I love yeah. that. Yeah, brilliant I, move. I want one of those. Someone oh, yeah. link them down in the comments. Even if it's like eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, or Craigslist. Oh God. <sighs> and have it have it on one of those sensitive pads under the carpet near the slipper <laughs> that switches on your stereo. Mm. Right, so as he goes. God, look at the size of them slippers. They said he goes, right, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so you, know, you can cheer the world up by doing things like that. 
A thing I haven't noticed in England, which is a very, very good thing, well, that is, it's a good thing you haven't got it. It's in Scotland, they say. Well, that's all from television tonight. Uh, I bid you all a very, very good night. And especially those of you who live alone. Uh. You know what? Should I just remind them? <laughs> Some of them are terrifying to say. And those of you who live alone, don't forget to lock all. <laughs> lock the windows. And, and, and stuff like that. And make sure the flamethrower's working. <laughs> and, and the Doberman pincher's got the elastic band round the willy. Keep it out. <laughs> don't let it knock off. Wow, just to rub, rub salt in the wound, huh? I love that. Dude, I, hey, over here, before your time, and uh, it was like, ended right before my time, or maybe it was during my time, I don't know. There was a, a message like, have you checked on your kids? Oh, okay. There was one of those reminders to parents to bring your kids in from the outside because it was getting dark. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I on every that. channel, it was just like, where are your kids? Like, I, could you imagine? Oh, man. That would, that would be like if uh, the Federal uh, w Trade Commission or Communications Commission had one of those, like a couple of weeks ago, where everyone's phone got an alert. Yep. It would be like, there would have to be a nationwide text. Yep. Are your kids Okay. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, and that would cause so much panic. But, I mean, that's it's just a different time. Man. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could trust your kids to be outside. <sighs> yeah. And from what I've learned about, you know, Scotland, in the summertime, there it doesn't get dark there till like, 10 or 11 o'clock. God damn. And it, the sun comes up around 3, 4 o'clock. Jesus. So, yeah, I, I guess they would need that <laughs> reminder. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. Holy crap. Mm. Jesus. Yeah, it's yeah, it's terrible. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I'd always wanted to be in charge of that bit of the program, <laughs> especially those of you who live alone. <laughs> Another one they do is they say, and that's all tonight, and I hope you enjoyed the programs as much as we did. <laughs> we, we also enjoyed them the first time round, and <laughs> yes, it's been great fun, and in the interest of safety, don't forget to switch off the TV before you go to bed. And for super safety, take the plug out of the wall altogether. <laughs> Because the house could go in fire. <laughs> the whole family could be barbecued. <laughs> and I say, all right, enough. I must do. It. If I was the guy doing that, I'd sit. I'd sit at the desk. Going right, 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 right. He'll be near the telly. He'll be stretching his hand out. He put it off. Leave it alone. <laughs> Where is your top? Get back to your seat. I'm not finished. <laughs> it's okay for them. Charlie's Angels, yeah, they're on every damn night. Well, it's my turn. I've got the switch. I'm in control of this station. And now the end is the end. Get away from that switch, you psychopath. So, that's... <laughs> but these adverts, there's the big slipper. And save pounds. They have a pound sign that goes down and down and down. Save! Boom, 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 boom. That's the PSs. Cut your own hair! <laughs> with this thing! Oh. And, then, and they have this lethal looking thing! <laughs> with things down each side and a handle. And you, of course you buy it and you go... My <laughs> God! The minute you... Three feet from your hair a big chunk falls out of sight! <laughs> 
Because <laughs> hair's like that. You know, you've, you've, you've always, the barber always feels that the, the hair that's dead as, you, as he's cutting your hair. You don't, you just see the result. But when you're actually just chipping away, and it's a huge, it feels like a massive big lump. Oh my God. But I'll, I'll give you a bit of advice. Where are you going? Get back to your seat. <laughs> Nobody leaves. Okay, lock the door. You're stolen something. Nobody leaves this building. I'll get him. Where's my bloody gun? <laughs> So if you buy that thing and you'll be in the bathroom trying it because you don't want your family to see that you've bought it, <laughs> the, the normal thing is go, oh, bugger that, and leave it. Throw it immediately in the bin because the time will come when you're out with the lads or whatever, you're at a party, a bit pissed. Yay! <laughs> they come in, do you? <laughs> oh, there's that thing! <laughs> Scandal. <laughs> There's another great thing. Before we go, I I need to admit something to all of you real real quick. Y'all have been seeing us for almost three years. I feel this is a safe space. I've cut my own hair before. What? How? How? Have you? Have you? I have just pull it around and just lock yeah, it? yeah, trim the dead ends off. Oh yeah, and I mean, here's how, here's how I did it, and I feel like this is gonna be make me the most judged thing ever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this off, so I won't be able to hear you for a little bit. So give me a second. What I did was I would take my hair down, uh -huh. and just after I showered, obviously, and then I would, I would kind of divide my hair in half, and then. Cut it, uh, bring it down to like so like like my nipples or something like that, and I would cut at that that uh, part until it was kind of even. And then what I would do is to get all get it even is I would take it and put it over you know my my hair like that and okay you know, and cut it like that. Wow, and, you know it worked. It worked like most of the time. Nice, nice yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I've never had long hair like that ever. So right, right. So this is not something you have to think about. Never, never. Yeah. If my hair it, ever gets long enough, it just it goes. I just, I just. There's a point I'll, I'll tolerate hair for a little bit, and then it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm just like I'm done with it. I just yeah. shave it off. I don't know. I guess we're opposites. Like oh that. yes, I'm, I'm a cave. I'm a caveman, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I got you, man. I feel that. I feel that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thing. It's uh, no, what is, an energy suit. An energy suit. <laughs> what? An, it's like a sleeping bag that you wear <laughs> when you're sitting in the house. It's your sleeves and things. And, and the idea is to save energy, so you put your big suit on and your slipper there. <laughs> and you can cut each other's hair if the telly's boring. <laughs> and there's another fabulous thing. Incontinence knickers. <laughs> there's always too many incontinence knickers. I think they were expecting a sort of plague of incontinence. <laughs> I think maybe it was at the last budget or something. He said to sell a lot of them. Oh no! And I was I was looking at this incontinence stuff and I thought, I'm 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 like I'm, I don't want to laugh at incontinent people, right? <laughs> It must be terrible, right? Being incontinent. You know, you get all dressed to go out and you go, psh. Oh. <laughs> Change it. You can't buy white clothes. You can't buy grey suits. You go, psh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Right. Because young people are incontinent too. I mean, it strikes all ages. Suppose he's a young, trendy guy. Hey. 
Hey, you guys. <laughs> He's trying to sneak back to his seats. Get back! <laughs> you haven't missed a thing. I was only killing time to get back. Go on. <laughs> so the guy's young and trendy. Says, and then he sees the advert. Right, that'll do me. Give us a pair of them. <laughs> Give us a bit of that. the very fellows for me! <laughs> the see-through plus fours! <laughs> Just the job at St Andrews! <laughs> on a rainy day! <laughs> then get the trendy baggy trousers on! And off to the discotheque giving it a bit of that, yeah! <laughs> hey, how you doing? What's your sign? Sagittarius? Oh, eh? <laughs> yeah, half man, half horse, yeah. Licence to shit in the street. That's good. <laughs> Care's not a jot. Suit. See, so you can wear them under your energy suit. <laughs> and there's a tray. There's a great tray. Uh, <sighs> I could never. I can never. Oh my god. Uh, it's like, it's like the during that whole controversy of NASA them sleeping with one another. The story of that one woman that drove for like twelve hours with an adult diaper on, and. <laughs> That's what that reminds oh, me of. Oh my god! And now, because I mean, the the in, that that whole idea is effing ridiculous. Yeah. Like, that's just to catch oopsies, not to go out and function. Yeah, yeah. Especially if if this was around the time that Taco Bell came to the yeah. UK. Yeah. And now, 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 trust me on this. Like. Just a four-year-old's diaper that is full of pee yeah. is so heavy. It's like, uh, it's like, dude, what the hell is going on? And um, I couldn't imagine an adult diaper. Oh, uh, hell like, no. Like, I just couldn't. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm. Oh, man, I pray every day that that doesn't happen to me, man. Yeah. <laughs> just walk around in my piss, man. I couldn't do that. Uh, or or number two, I just couldn't. Yeah, no. I, that's mm -mm. that when that happens to you, your day is pretty yeah. much done. Yeah, your day's done. Pretty yeah, much. that's your day. Try again. Try again tomorrow. Yeah, it's what, that's like what you said once. After thirty, never trust a fart. Yeah, never and, trust a fart. <laughs> and I'll add to that: carry, carry spare underwear with you all the time, or double up on socks. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, just, oh man! Uh, you can get for sticking on the side of the settee. <laughs> uh, it clamps on in case you're a bit overheated when you're watching Starsky and Hutch. You go, oh, not, not the yellow grey all over the carpet, and it's got holes in it, so your stuff sits well in, wedged in. Your tea and the custard creams are all in wee places. <laughs> You see, your energy suits to save energy, so you switch off all the heating and get the suit on. <laughs> Nick is cutting the hair. <laughs> and oh, my favourite! Dog bags! 
keep dog hair off the furniture <laughs> with this breakthrough dog bag. <laughs> and it's a bag you put the dog in. <laughs> times out his day, <laughs> and you get a wee special bag for the bungee. You put the <laughs> keep feathers out the carpet. <laughs> So your dog's in the bag, <laughs> and you're all sitting with a big slipper each. <laughs> watching the telly. Unless you're a super duper family, you're one big slipper for the whole family. <laughs> well, you've all got a big slipper each, and the mother says to the father, <laughs> I'm just nipping out. <laughs> I'm just nipping out to the toilet. What? <laughs> Why don't you put on a cup of tea? I don't know. Anyway, that's. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And the other bit about my life before I got here to this stage, you know, to this part of my life, and, eh. Uh, is I, I used to be a folk singer, but uh, I was dreadful. Uh, <laughs> I had a voice like a goose farting in the fog. <laughs> the whole thing limited me a bit much, you know. You can only go so far with dead lifeboat men, and you get kind of stuck. <laughs> and, uh, and mining disasters. And, and it doesn't make you attractive to women at all. <laughs> so a man held up a thing there in the set and spoiled my floor. <laughs> uh, and I'm supposed to... Uh, would anybody like to ask me a windswept and interesting question? <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> you can do it! <laughs> See, what I was... Funny enough, I was talking to Robbie Coltrane about this a wee while ago. We did a programme recently, me and Mr Coltrane. And, uh, we were Holy shit. That's, yeah. that's Hagrid. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I thought, I was like, dude, come on. You know him. Uh, uh, that, I didn't bring it up because I was like, Ian, he knows who that is. Oh, it took me a second. <laughs> I don't recognize him without the beard. I just yeah. see him as Hagrid. Yep. <sighs> oh, my goodness. I, I, I'm i sorry for all the sect of ETS 21 that are Harry Potter fans. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Man. Wow. <laughs> talking about the way real people, you know what I was talking about the other hey, the hey, the hey. and the, the way real people hear it all. She used to go to parties. Hey, hey, you love you very much. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve, funny love. Say, oh, big man, shut up. <laughs> See, now I loved that. I used to go to parties and listen to these men singing. For years, I didn't know it was English. <laughs> I thought it was some weird Scottish language. I went round the music shops of Glasgow trying to find the words. Cheerio. How does it uh, go? <laughs> Uh, see, well, it's a uh, it goes uh, hit him hard. <laughs> hit him hard. <laughs> hit him shitty ball. <laughs> no, I don't know that one. So. <laughs> this is before the days of Alexa and Shazam. Oh man, uh, I, I I don't mad. I can't imagine how people did it back then they just it's like you know the invention of smartphones yeah like you 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 just kind of had to let it go and hope that it came back around and in six months you're like oh that's the song yep yep and, and it's, like then it's like what is he saying and then mm -hmm. then and i feel like that's why people cling to their old school bands yeah because they did the work to find the lyrics to figure them out. Yeah, and they just can't be bothered with yeah. the rest of them. Yeah. And nowadays, uh. it's like, Alexa, 
Play yeah. Spencer Joyce. God. Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. Yeah. Okay, Google. Play Spencer Joyce. One more, one more. Yep. Hey, Siri. Play Spencer Joyce. <laughs> You're uh, welcome. Yep. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> I had to get that in. Sorry. Oh, it's so annoying when I'm listening it to this on my phone. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I get another point three cents. God. <laughs> and they weren't like London kind of showbiz parties. You get a huge carryout first. You get a dozen beers and a half bottle of whiskey. Right. So you better get some Bacardi. There might be women there. Oh, OK. <laughs> And then with this carry-out bag, you've seen those carry-out bags. I know they're sort of... Well, I don't know if they've got them in England now. They certainly didn't. They used to have them. It's a carrier bag with a brewery on the side there. And off you go, looking for a party. <laughs> now, that, that, I mean, you, you haven't been invited any. You don't get invited. This sort of happen. So you get the bag and, and then you go along these tenement streets listening. <laughs> And then from a window you hear, Harry Paul. <laughs> Harry Paul. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do the big man. He's here, up we go. <laughs> and then when you get there, if it's ever happens to you, just tell them Jimmy said it was OK. <laughs> There's always a Jimmy in the room. Ah, oh, big, I met a guy doing the boozer there. Jimmy says just to come right up. What did he look like? Oh, he was a bit pissed, you know. <laughs> well, that'll be him, the guy. <laughs> There's somebody upside down behind the telly. <laughs> oh, that's the man, the very man. <laughs> Sit down, son, give us a song. Hey, <laughs> And there's another thing about Scotsmen. They always sing about being far away from Scotland when they're still there. <laughs> Though I'm far across the sea. <laughs> no, you're not. You shut your face. It's the only song your father knows right through. Be quiet. I'm very far away. <laughs> It's like I can't ever sing Carolina in my mind by James Taylor anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because like, I'm in North Carolina now. Like, you're here, bro. Like, okay. Yeah, fair, fair point. Fair point. I mean, if I, I, I'm so close to the Virginia line, I could probably just walk just over to walk the Virginia over line and yep. now, then I could sing it. Yep. <laughs> I, and uh, that's valid right there. Totally. Totally. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's <man>. funny. <laughs> and uh, of course, everybody likes to sing. And, and, and they sometimes they spin a bottle. And when it points at you, it's your turn, and you have to do a thing, you know. And if you only know the one song, well, somebody might sing it before you. <laughs> and that's you, you have to leave, go home. <laughs> oh, sir, I'm off. <laughs> so, yeah, it's happened to me. I used to be the wild side of life. Hard oh, by the wild side of life. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the wild. Hang went back to the way Who said lie? What's the one? Do you know what a, a who is? A he. That's where the old rugged cross stands on. He fired away on a who. There was a guy who used to come round. Do you know the tenement buildings are uh, the tenement buildings are in squares, and in in the centre of the the square, there is the back green or the back court. We called it the back court. And buskers used to come round on a Sunday. All these wounded people, you know, because I was a, I, I was born in 1942, so it was like the late 40s. I saw these men going, oh, oh, they're now. They are now working in national car parks. <laughs> They've all got a leg like that. Hey! Hey, you! Hey, you can't be put down here! Oh, God. They've all got this disorder. Them and barbers, huh? What do you make of that, Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> I'm phoning the police, that's it. <laughs> it's, 
Oh, God help us all. <laughs> but it's, it's strange. The people who sing at parties, did all oh, these buskers come round the back like that. And it was a Sunday morning, and they had it all sussed. Because we, we lived on the side of the block that were Irish immigrants, you know, Conley and Flanagan and all these people. And on the other side were Highland people, all the McDonald's and, and Morrison's and Campbell's and whatever, over there. And he would sing Protestant stuff over there. <laughs> hey, howdy, old records. <laughs> and he'd come over to us and go, happy buddy. <laughs> and we used to heat pennies. You get a pair of... <laughs> uh oh you get a penny and a pair of pliers <laughs> and heat it on the gas. <laughs> ah, <me buddy. laughs> there you go! Oh, thanks very much. Ah! <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> <Gathering> Bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Catholic Protestant thing. Ugh. Oh, dude. It's more than just the, oh. the old firm. That's for sure. Dude. Oh, my God. I, I'm, that's, Eating that's pennies fucking, fucking on the stove? <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, oh, man. It's not funny, but that's hilarious. Exactly. Oh, not God. funny, but it's hilarious. Yeah. Jesus. And the, and the priest just <laughs> the priest used to come round visiting the houses, you know, to, to see how everybody was doing. And and they were always wee lonely men. We could they always look cold priests. They were rather clean, you know. Cold looking men. Come creeping about and say, Here's a priest coming! Put that television off! Right, get to your rooms! Come on, hurry, get to your damn rooms! The priest's coming up the bloody stairs! Get to your damn rooms! <laughs> and, and, and see, priests think the world is full of broken televisions. <laughs> Everywhere they go, it's not working. <laughs> see, a guy once told me the Queen thinks the world smells like paint, because ten feet in front of her is always a guy coming <laughs> These, these tellies, and, and they've got no telly in the, in the chapel house, so he's just wanting to see Charlie's angels. <laughs> and as I say, I lived in the tenements there, and there was a kind of, there was a warmth about the whole thing. There was, I've always seen tenements as kind of vertical villages. People say, oh, the deprivation! Oh, my! <laughs> Nonsense. When you're a wee boy, it's not like that. You know, it, it, it felt great. You know, there's all these nice neighbours and... And they had big wooden toilet seats then. You know, luxuries. You know, you didn't lose a power of your legs reading the Sunday paper. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, maybe it's my age. I seem to, I can't walk halfway through the... <laughs> hey! <laughs> and the needles can't get out the damn thing. It's important for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> The only other time I ever felt like that, I had a drink in America called a zombie. <laughs> Have you ever drank zombies? It's a kind of muddy coloured. I would advise you to do it. It's an extraordinary concept. You get drunk from the bottom up. <laughs> You're perfectly lucid. Talking away, oh yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Have you got the time that was that British time? You'd been very, oh, terrific jet set in her bane. Until you need to go to the toilet. <laughs> Your legs are pissed. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll just go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't get up, you see? <laughs> Look at my other motor. Flint Chick Murray once told me he fell in the street and a woman said to him, Did you fall? He said, No, I'm trying to break a bar of chocolate in my back pocket. <laughs> Here's your sign. <laughs> Here's your sign. That's exactly. 
<laughs> I was thinking, oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> I've never heard of zombie before as a drink. <laughs> never, ever, it's ever. An old thing. Yeah. It must be um this uh, probably illegal now. Yeah, yeah, very likely. But <laughs> there's some things that'll get you that way. Yeah. Like peach schnapps, schnapps in yep. general. Yeah. Any anything in in excess will get you there. Yeah, especially if it goes down too easy. Yes. Oh, mm. yes, man. Yeah. One second. Yeah. I, I, I hear something. I'm trying yep. to figure out. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Oh my shit, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, I had no idea that there was a uh um an Alexa out there. <laughs> oh my god, dude. So I shot myself in the foot. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. That I'm is an awesome. Idiot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> You're like, wait, what the fuck is that noise? <laughs> yeah. I forgot there was uh... a <laughs> Alexa down there. That's great. It's like I hear myself. That's like what the fuck heard, is going on? I heard some noise. I just I thought Nana had the TV on at stereo stadium level. <sighs> oh my god, dude. It's like what the fuck? Did, did, and, did, uh, did you hear it in the background? Nope. Okay, not good. At all. Okay. So it probably won't bleed out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus. Anyway, all right. When the police come to the house, mother says, and see, in the, in the tenements, you'd put a bit, you know, a bit poorish. In the winter, you'd throw coats on the bed for the kids. <laughs> uh, a bit of coat there, uh, keep it warm. <laughs> oh, God. The very thought. <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually brilliant, because you could wear them in the dark and go about <laughs> playing things, right? You wear the fur coat, and I'll wear this big <laughs> And the priests in having the corned beef sandwiches and the custard creams. Have, a, come, have another crumpet, Father. That's what they're there for. Come on, get it down. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Connolly. There's bedlam in the room, but oh. Will you be quiet? <laughs> We're trying to be quiet in there. <laughs> Can hardly hear myself thinking here. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to Father Flanagan here. <laughs> the noise is deaf in here. <laughs> it's him, Mummy! It's him again! <laughs> he's taking more than his fair share of the coat! What are you talking about, coat? There's no coat in there! I don't know, it's a fertile imagination, but... <laughs> the coats are all in the cloak room! <laughs> it's a room in kitchen! Bloody cloak room! She thinks it's a dance hall, she's in. <laughs> the coats are in the cloak room, and well, you know it! <laughs> <laughs> Near the luncheonette, <laughs> next to the breakfast bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eider down. <laughs> this stupid girl coat. <laughs> I don't know where they get it. She must have thought it was one of them doovy jackets. <laughs> eider down. <laughs> what are you saying, Father? What were you saying? <laughs> What were you saying about God there, fella? What was that? All right enough. You have a custard cream, that's fine. And you don't say, bedlam, bedlam, bedlam. Will you stop that in there? I won't tell you. I won't tell you again. It's him, mommy. It's him again. What's he doing this time? He's shoving his legs through the sleeves of the eye. <laughs> See, I've always had, I've always had trouble with, with, with communication. And it started at home. I, you know, nobody could ever talk to me. You know, you say, Dad? I say, what? <laughs> you know, 
And everybody I knew was the same, all my friends. And the, the people couldn't communicate properly with them. They didn't talk about generation gaps, because it wasn't a problem. You just battered the children into a <laughs> <laughs> stupid person. <laughs> and on it went. It was just, but they used to say strange things to you. Say, can I go out on my bike? What? Bike? I'll give you bike. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to get some hate for this, but was Father Jack secretly Scottish? <laughs> Ooh, interesting. The plot thickens, was he? Because all he said was, Fag off! Yep. Ass! Drink! It, 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 like, I hear that in Billy Connolly. I do, too. I yeah. do, too. And I mean, I, 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 then again, my ears are not completely trained yet. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I understand. I understand. We've been doing this for like three fucking years. Yeah, still, exactly. Still, still. <laughs> one of us has to. Yes. So you leave that to me, bro. There you go, man. There you go. That's yours. <laughs> That's yours, dude. Yeah, it, it's the tight stuff like that. It drives me to break. <laughs> yes. <sighs> I've got a bait. <laughs> But me, boy. <laughs> Can I go to the pictures? What? <laughs> pictures, is it? Oh, pictures, you, my lad. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> There's lots of things I don't know. I'll make you smile on the other side of your face. <laughs> Slash me! <laughs> I mean, there's one they use in Scotland. I'll take my hand off your face, my boy. <laughs> it's the putting on at high speed I didn't fancy. <laughs> no. It was weird. They, they also developed this thing of telling you not to do something by telling you to do it. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, just leave your underwear lying on the floor. <laughs> I say, don't bother about another soul in the whole world, only your stupid self. Just leave it lying there along with your stinking socks. <laughs> just leave it lying there for me to pick up. But that's what I'm done, done. <laughs> Now get into that room and don't let me hear a sound out of you. Don't let me hear you laughing, or for God's sake, I will come marching in there and give you something to laugh at. <laughs> I think he's going to tell us a joke. <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> Anybody thought of your question yet? <laughs> I think the troops are beginning to panic. Oh, Michael Parkinson's going to ask me something! <laughs> yes! Yes! Yes, Michael! I know him! talking to me <laughs> it's been such a long just a minute i get back to my famous place <laughs> yes michael well <laughs> I mean, you are you are a, a considerable traveler aren't you i mean oh the, indeed you are a windswept <laughs> and interesting traveler author of a of a well-written and best-selling book on travel called gullibus Fab and groovy book company That's yes right. i just wonder what you published made published by your good self this is <laughs> <laughs> You had years plugging yourself on my show, mate. No one's not putting it. <laughs> what I was going to ask you about was travel. I mean, do you think it broadens or narrows the mind? And which is the place you've been to? I think, mean, particularly, so Australia. I mean, Australia is that worse than? Playing? Australia is a wondrous, fab, and groovy place. <laughs> and and travel narrows the mind. <laughs> it narrows it to that size. <laughs> if you wish to know anything, don't travel. And it gets worse every year. The more I travel, the more I miss my own bed. Do you ever think of your bed that way? I can have the, the further away I go, the weirder people get. And the drums never stop. <laughs> and Australia's okay. Yeah. Needs a population transplant, but it's okay. <laughs> it's pretty strange. They call you poofter all the time. 
which is disconcerting. I wore an earring and it's... My, I went to... The, it's a strawberry thing. I was playing in a town called Huayala, which is a real toilet. <laughs> it, it's a shipyard in an iron ore terminal. And it's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Caesar's Palace, Huayala. And... <laughs> said, have you ever been an iron knob? Because <laughs> the whole thing was a bit bizarre. Because the previous week's guest had been Tiny Tim, and I thought, this whole thing's a bloody nightmare. <laughs> I'm not really here. And he said, I'd like to take you to Iron Knob. I said, I'm sure you would. <laughs> People have tried before you. open to offers. What? He said, I'd like to take you to Iron Knob. He says, because in Iron Knob they have the cleanest hotel in Australia. It's the mo Australia's one of my favourite countries on the earth, but it's certainly the strangest. It's, the, it's not a, a hysterically funny story, but it's the strangest thing I've ever seen. We, we drove from Wyala to Iron Knob to this hotel that they hose down every day. <laughs> it has a big mountain made of iron ore. Like, somebody walked along and said, that's made of iron ore. <laughs> and they ex they're slowly exporting this mountain to Japan, who are buying it, but a handful. And these people are getting wealthy, and they all live in this hotel. And th the red dust settles on it, and they hose the hotel down. And it's, it's the cleanest hotel in Australia. So I went in, and there was a man, it was like deliverance. There was people all hanging about the end of the bar. <laughs> And they looked as if they'd been stood like that for years. <laughs> Those people with the two front teeth that could fall down. They skipped caps. And we went in, there was myself and several other guys of my crew, and most of them had earrings on, you know, and I had one on. It was a strawberry thing I was wearing at the time. I found it made me exotic and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> people used to sidle up to me and say, my God, you're windswept and interesting. <laughs> And I would come in, I come into the bar and, and this wee man, I can't do an Australian accent. Oh dear God, I can't, difficulty with Scottish accent. <laughs> and this man, no really, th this man said, oh yeah, the poof does the hair. We are on the round of beer and it was poof to poof to this and poof to the other and poof to this and poof to that. Oh, it's really boring. And there was a, a toilet seat behind the bar. One of those horseshoe-shaped ones with little medals on it, and it was obviously the trophy for the pool. There was a pool table in the bar. So I was looking at it, you know, and he said, yeah, poofta, pommy poofta, and I said, excuse me. He says, yep. I said, who took your picture out the frame? <laughs> and, and as it turned out, he, he radically changed. He went, Hey, how you do? Drinks all round. Nobody buys drinks. I'm giving it that. And he, but it was extraordinary. His name was Smith, and he was the garbage collector in Wyala. He just and he was worth a fortune. And he would say, "Smith's the name. Shits the game." <laughs> and Smith's the name. Shits the game. Right, right round the whole crew. And then sort of halfway along, he thought, "I'm being boring here." And he would say, "Shits the game. The name's the same." <laughs> It's a great country, Australia. I do like it. Really? Really? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> nah, note to self. Uh, <clears throat> do we go to Iron Knob or not go? I don't know. I, 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 they probably have already mined it all and just sent it away at this yeah. point. Goodness. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. 30 something years ago. Almost yeah. 40. At least we know to look for, uh, you know, Smith's the name, shit's the game. I love that, dude. You gotta have fun with it. If you're in, if you're in refuse, if you're in in, in human waste disposal, then yeah, yes, yeah, you gotta have you, fun you, with it. You work for like Porta John Services yep. or something. You gotta, you gotta know, you gotta Spence, know that. Yep. Spence the name, shit's the game. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, uh, man. A point he made earlier about does travel broaden the mind or narrow the mind? I, I obviously I haven't done a lot of international traveling, but I I'll just go ahead and say it. Doing this whole ETS twenty one thing, I'd say it's made me more American because I know yeah. what I'm not. Well, I 
I feel like it's important. Well, I, I, I feel like it's important to travel because yeah. it makes you miss where you're from more. Mm -hmm. Makes you appreciate where you're from more. Yeah. And and that's really kind of it. I mean, you you get to experience other cultures and other other areas, right? And you're just like, this is awesome, but it's it's different. And you yeah. get to you get to go home. You right. know, like some of the places I've traveled to in my life, I'll never forget when I get over like New York or DC, I look down. And all the roads are straight and I can see all the organized traffic and lights. And I'm like, I'm here. Oh. <laughs> I'm here. You're I mean, place it's of, crazy. Your place of familiarity. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Got an Australian. <laughs> really, when I was growing up in Wyala. <laughs> They call me I am no. <laughs> we always used to say that the Scots were very tight with their money. What, what about you and money? What do you do with your money? I, I don't really have a very this much is money. Odd. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I spend it all in Langens. You've probably seen the picture in the paper. <laughs> I've, read, I've tried. I do not understand money. I've tried extremely hard to be Scottish about it and keep some, you know, I, I, but it seems to, I can't handle it. I just, and when I get ahead of the game, I say, God, you've done well, buy something. And I have nothing again. <laughs> and I've tried understanding Dow Jones Index and the Financial Times 20 share it. I have no idea what it is. And I'm, I'm just, I will never have money. Some people will have money and others are going to be skint. Some, some are going to be famous and skint. And I am one of them. I am one, and I've heard all the stories about Scottish people who dropped 50 pence, bent down to pick it up, hit them in the back of the head. <laughs> copper wire. <laughs> copper wire was invented by two Scotsmen fighting over a penny. But I, <laughs> I can't handle it. I, I don't know. I have any, any money. I've got no money stories either. Anybody ask me? Really? Jam. Mm. Billy, when I first came to London and spoke with my Scottish accent, I was so conscious of it feeling very flat-footed. And, and, and I wondered, when you came to London to begin with, did you have awful problems with the Scottish accent? I did. You know. It was, I, well, I didn't really have a problem. I kind of, uh, people treated me a bit like I was a Swahili poet. <laughs> <laughs> they, found they would make me say things, I just could not believe that I was speaking in English. And now when I listen to my old albums, I can understand, because I, I liked it that way. And when I go home, I, I love to play in Scotland and be a comedian because I can, suddenly I, I get the luxury of speaking at the right speed. You know, I really, I go like a train and nobody, like in England you wouldn't understand it. And it was sort of, how can I put it? You speak a bit like a pillar box, you don't move your mouth at all. And you point with your feet. You know, people say, excuse me, could you direct me to Sunny Hall Street? You go, hi, sorry. <laughs> Much. I think it's something to do with the climate. <laughs> and we're, we're a bit strange because most of us are conceived while our parents are fully clothed. <laughs> it's a climate, you know, two seasons, June and winter. Uh, so I, I, I understood what he said. It's like a, a little bit. It's like, no, sorry, we're, it's closed or something like that. I, I, all, every person from Scotland I've talked to like they're they say they always have to slow down their their speech to uh get be sure that non-scots can understand them I almost died with that copper wire um <laughs> joke yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely died that was that was awesome that was that a was, great joke this is a this was an interest this is an interesting like uh concept he's he's fielding questions at a stand-up gig? That's crazy. Yeah, or maybe it's like maybe it's like a series, an audience with, or oh, something like that. I don't okay. know. I don't know. I know. I knew he did about an hour of stand-up before he started fielding questions. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. cool. I, I mean, I think it's a unique and awesome concept. Oh yeah. You know, that's uh, hey, 
Hey, all right. Hell yeah. Theater. There's a lovely old variety theatre joke. See, most of the policemen in, in, in Glasgow, he came from the Highlands, those big beefy Highland red-faced guys. And, and they always, and they told jokes about them like the way people tell Irish jokes about silly Highlanders. And, and the great end of the pier, Scottish one, is the policeman who found a drunk man lying in Sucky Hall Street and dragged him into Hope Street because he couldn't spell Sucky Hall Street. <laughs> There was the line they say about them when he's questioning a wee boy. He says, "Did the window break on both sides when you threw the stone?" <laughs> <laughs> Were you on the bicycle when you fell off? Just kind of, yeah. I'd Andy like to ask me anything. God, I'm embarrassed. Yes, I'd love to ask you. Oh, look! Hello. I've seen you in the uh, pictures. Oh, <laughs> I'd love to know. You bring out the mother in me. What does your mother think of you? She doesn't like me very much. <laughs> she, she does. She actually likes me. She's a. Uh, I had the most extraordinary experience of, uh, of probably that any adult could have. And I, I met my mother when I was an adult. <laughs> uh, really, my, my mother and father uh, parted when I was a small child. And it was a deeply embarrassing thing for me because I really blew it. My mother, who was obviously very nervous, came up to me at a gig and uh, and she said, you're Billy Connolly? And I said, yeah, at reaching for the pen. <laughs> an and I felt really stupid. It was, it was, it was extraordinary. I'm glad you asked me that. It was an extraordinary moment in my life to be confronted by my mother. I was looking for bits that looked like me, you know? <laughs> and she looks a wee bit like me, you know, around the eyes and the nose there. But I think she's... Uh, Kind of, we don't keep much in touch. I don't really keep all that much in touch with any of my relatives. But uh, I think she's like my father, who we keep more in touch, my father and I. He tried to, to like what I do. What I do. It, but he's a, he's a practicing Catholic. He's a devout Catholic. And I did all that stuff about the Last Supper and making fun of all that. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah. And he was deeply wounded by the whole affair. And then slowly, when I stopped doing it, he got kind of better about it and more open-minded. And then he came to a phase where he, he tried to look interested in my show business, about which he knows nothing at all. He's not, I'm the only one in the history of the entire family ever to go to the theatre, far less perform in it. And, <laughs> and he, he would say things like, he would look interested. Oh, yeah, hello, Bill. Is this you back in town again? I say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was all hairy and beads and flared bottoms and peace and love. Yeah, hey, ding a ling a ling, Bill. <laughs> ding, 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 it's me. Yippee, yeah, we're home again. I say, yeah, is that you back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he would say, busy? I say, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. You say, have you any jigs this week? <laughs> <laughs> Jinks, they have remained. You know when somebody makes a mistake like that and it's too late to, to tell them? Oh, actually, it's gig, father. <laughs> so, yeah. Jinks, so I've got a few jigs now. <laughs> I've got a new guitar once. And uh, I'd spent a lot of money on this Gibson guitar. And uh, I said, hey, I've got a new guitar. He said, oh, oh really? <laughs> saying that to my father, you know, I was like saying, doormat, father. <laughs> I opened the case, I said, look, Hmm. <laughs> and you could see his wee face there. I said, what can I say about this bloody thing? <laughs> hmm. And he looks at the neck of the guitar and he says, it's got a lovely handle. <laughs> and so, so handle it has remained. So I take my guitar handle to my jigs and I... <laughs> and they, they, I think they're quite reasonably proud of what I do. You know, I think success brings its own sort of pride and jollity, no matter what you do. I don't know what Hitler's mother thought, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy! <laughs> That's my boy over there, the one with a fancy walk! He yeah. <laughs> never hits his mother, that boy. <laughs> Vegetarian, too. Oh, I I bought a book, do you remember? I bought a book in Edinburgh, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a vegetarianism, uh, Buddhism and vegetarianism. 
And I, I bought it because there was people looking at me in the bookshop. I said, I better buy something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually interested because I stopped eating meat and I was feeling a bit weird about it. I've questioned it all the time. I say, why don't we get tablecloths, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is it about vegetarians? They won't give us tablecloths. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's true in those that vegetarian restaurants. They said they're all at bloody youth hostels. <laughs> People in tartan shirts, hello! Can I have... <laughs> I'll never tell you what anything is. <laughs> Do you go to these health food shops? I'm going to lose the same. I'm going to lose the porridge. What's that? Oh, he doesn't know a muesli. <laughs> what a muesli nut bag it looks like. <laughs> but there's never any varnish on the table. It's the wire brush them all down. <laughs> All I want is a tablecloth and a waiter. See what I was telling you about touching your willy? Have you noticed how many waiters touch? They call that, yeah, can I help you? Wait, what would you like as a main course? <laughs> she never should do so quick to go like that. She never should if they actually did it. <laughs> Are you the same, sir? <laughs> and people touch the willy for some reason. When they look out the window, <laughs> they say, How's the, what's the weather like? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't check if my bike's still outside, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's... <laughs> we all do it. All of us, yep. Yep. Even, even women. They, yep. they still touch. Yep. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I, I love this part. It's like it, it, it riffs on everything else that's going on. Dude, like that's why I'm like, this format is awesome. I yeah. love this. Yeah, kind of a Q&A. It's like a built-in kind of crowd work. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but not like a, um, not like a, what is it? When they go after the crowd. But it's yeah. like crowd work. But it's, it's, it's really cool, man. Because yeah. the, the people that are asking questions are mic'd up. Yeah, yeah. It's like planned beforehand. I love yeah. that, man. Yeah. I was going to say something about like his relationship with his father. It's like how he doesn't really understand and can't really be interested in his work. That's like my Nana and Papa to a T. Like, like my Nana, bless her soul, she does not like concerts or loud events. She went to George Jones one time and couldn't Stand it because it was so loud. George Jones? George Jones. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, that's awesome, man. And and my papa was just like, uh, it, it seemed like he was the most sheltered person ever. Just did not know anything about pop culture. <laughs> Love that, dude. Yeah. Love so. That. So I, I, I he would have said, like, jigs, take your handle to a jig. Uh, that's like but you know what though hey you gotta try to find a way to relate you know yeah yeah like me trying to explain what it is that we do to my father is the same yeah i've had the same like, deal with my nana <laughs> it hurts me trying to explain what it is i do because i still don't know what it is we do and so <laughs> i'm like dude just let, let's not ask i am i'm your son you're my father and that is what we know right now Yes, in this conversation yes, yes. <laughs> you're you're my nana i'm your grandson yeah it was like that's the deal. okay that's it we'll just go with what we know yeah you know my mom gets what i do because she <laughs> she uses the actually uses the internet and knows how to text and how to use social media oh my god that's awesome but yeah man but, but like you was telling me like your dad what was he born 56 or uh, 55 like that. i think yeah 55 55, 55. Yep. so my my mom was born in 68 so wow okay yeah so i guess there's there's that there's, difference there's, there's that difference yeah man. yeah and my nana was born in 44 so. wow that's it's crazy how like a generation is or yeah a generation is so different than the last one yeah. wildly different oh yeah so, oh yeah <laughs> mm. Silly, I, I don't even begin to understand that kind of behaviour. <laughs> but of, of course, you see, vegetarianism, it sounds like Presbyterianism to me, and I've always <laughs> felt uncomfortable, as if I've joined some sect, <laughs> you know. Can I do... Barbara Dixon, are you going to ask me something? Yes, please. 
I knew. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. It, wait till veganism came around. Yeah, and I felt that with the the Whole Foods, pretty much. He predicted Whole Foods. Yeah, like you go into a health place and not know what the hell it is that mm-hmm. they're that's in there. You just know that for a hundred and eighty dollars, you're walking out with the bag. Or yeah. Something. Yeah, That's yeah. Most likely khaki. Pretty right? much. Yeah. Even though they do have a hot bar, which is can be good at times. Yeah. If you want to pay too much money for n- not as good f- Chinese food. Yeah, pretty much, man. That's what it is. Yeah. <sighs> How do you know? <laughs> I was just ages going to... ago, folk singer, same as me. I was just going to say that you we cut our eye teeth, as it were, in, in folk clubs in the 60s. Do you remember those days fondly, Billy, or do you think it's all a bit sort of funny nowadays? I think it was great. I, I loved the folk... Uh, see, and you'll remember, when, when I came into the folk scene, it was full of... See, I was a welder, right? And I had been in the Territorial Army, and so I was a really boring kind of guy. <laughs> yes! Yes, I support this country! I will die! <laughs> I'm a real asshole. So, <laughs> and I thought, I'd, I'd love to. I saw this guy one day. I went to a folk club. I wanted to, I called it campfire music, you see? I'd seen it in television. I thought, I love that campfire stuff. <laughs> it was Pete Seeger on a, a program called Alex A While. And I went to the, the George Square Information Office in Glasgow where you're supposed to ask how to get to Loch Lomond. <laughs> and I said, how can I hear some of this campfire stuff? And they said, sorry. I said, you know, a bit of the old guitar and cowboy songs and all that stuff. And I went along and there was a man there, Ronnie Gilchrist, still a friend of mine with an earring and long hair. I'd never seen a man like that before. I thought, oh, my God, look at these people. And I instantly became one. High heels and hair. I can go hear it well. Like, and, and I bought a banjo. And I met a man in Edinburgh. I never met people like it. And there was a man here. I, never, I can't remember his name. He had a dachshund. He was like a long dog. And he was strange. Kind of, he walked in slow motion. He, his dog walked fast and he walked slow. Like I can't remember his name, but he played the banjo. And so few people did. And he said, I could show you some banjo. And I said, oh, great, come on up to my place. And away he went like that, and the dog. <laughs> and we went up. And this man lived in a tent inside a house. <laughs> <laughs> and we sat in his tent because he couldn't afford to heat the room. So we sat in the tent and he showed me, what was that? Skip to Malou. Ding, dang, ding, diddle, ding, ding, ding. And it was brilliant. And I loved it. And it went got nice and nice. And I loved it until about the same time as yourself, Barbara, but maybe eight years ago, ten-ish, it got awful. The whole folk thing, because social workers liked it, and uh, <laughs> student teachers and Christian groups went, Hi, I'm the Lord of the Dead, said he, I was a fucker! There's people who play with a thumb like that. Hi, I am the Lord of the Dead, said he, I'll do you all, whatever you want hear. <laughs> As soon as I see a duffel coat, I lose interest. <laughs> duffel coat and kickers. It's a cry for help. Hi, I'm loving the. <laughs> so I got out, you know, and I hated bands with the. Uh... So what I hated was I would go to gigs and I'd drive past we men and women, you know, go along the street, and we'd get to the gig and it would be all full of duffel coats. And we'd play the thing and leave, and there'd be all these wee ordinary people. And I thought, I want them. The ones who were walking past the concert, I wanted the public. And so I, I went to work in men's clubs. And Jesus, I got them. Oh, <laughs> it was awful. And then, thankfully, I got telly. Like, Bill Tennant in Scotland, and then Mike Parkinson, and then, whoosh. Fame! <laughs> Hi, Fiddly Dee! An actor's life for me! <laughs> Talking about which, I got a part in a play in Glasgow. They called Clydeside. And the director was Keith Darville, a really nice block. And he, he came to the pub where all the hairy people were, all the folk singers and poets and stuff. It was called the Scotia Bar. And he said, uh, are you a musician? I said, oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, musician sat so well on my shoulders. Oh, musician, but yes. <laughs> Mais oui, I said. <laughs> 
He says, you're the very man I'm looking for. I said, just show me the way. <laughs> and we went to the Citizens Theatre in Glasgow. And uh, he said, let's hear you playing. And I went, rinky tinky poo. He went, that's very good. Yeah, I said, I also play the banjo. What? I said, I play the auto harp. Brilliant. You're the man. He said, I'm doing a play called Clydeside with Matt McGinn and various Scottish actors. It's going to be good. I'd like you to do the entire music. And I said, oh, yeah, something inside me fell on its side, you know. <laughs> Owning up time. <laughs> I said, well, actually, I'm a bit flash, but I'm not really very good. I don't know, I couldn't establish keys and all that, but I know a guy who can. So I went down and I got a guy called Tom Harvey, and we went up together, and I said, this is him. And, and we played together, and he said, right, I love both of you. But it was extraordinary. This was in my break to get out of the folk scene. I didn't know, I was in this, I had never seen a play before, you see. So I was in the first play I ever saw, I'm sitting on the stage, and I found it incredibly interesting. So, we'd be, and I, so I didn't know what a cue was. I'd never had one before. It was always right, two 20 minute spots, on you go, cash in the hand, thank you very much. That cue got me, so we go, hey, I'll do you, off. Well, thanks very much. And that was my showbiz, and people used to talk about tabs, I said, sorry. You know what? No idea. But so I was sitting watching the play, and of course I'm supposed to be in it and reading through the script. And uh, the play is getting along, and people are saying things to each other. And the guy say, "Yes, oh how tough it is down the mines, my God! And it breeds a certain type of man, you know, Maggie. Do you remember young Jamie Fires and the old Tom Drew? <laughs> and I'm sitting with a guitar going." <laughs> And I went, I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the director says, well, I said, that's fine. <laughs> he's asking me, I didn't know. I said, oh, oh yeah, I'm a, I, oh, I play when he says that. He says, yes. <laughs> oh, brilliant, right, right, eh, right, right, Tom, right, I want to, young Jamie. Oh. Yeah. But I come in, the f I've often, lay awake screaming, thinking about this. I come in the next day, and I got the Keith Darville. If you ever meet him, he'll tell you. And I had the script, and I had the cues underlined with a black felt tip. I said, look, I've got this idea. See, every time I have to play, I've underlined it here <laughs> in the script. He said, Jesus, what a breakthrough, eh? <laughs> Don't tell any of them. <laughs> But look, it's just about time to wrap up the, the, this thing. Oh, you're going to add something? I was. Oh, God. <laughs> it's Michael Aspel, personal friend of mine. <laughs> he probably knows Mike Parkinson very well. <laughs> he should, he's nicked his place in the telly. So. <laughs> he was keeping his seat warm. It was the first one. No, listen. If you had not been born in 1942, yes. when would you have liked to have been born? When would I have liked it? <laughs> I think I'd have the same again. <laughs> no, I've, I thought recently about how... Th this age was made for people like me. Adventurous, handsome heroes. <laughs> I could save the world, given half a chance. And I... No, I think this is the best ever era in the history of the entire earth. And I love every second. I swear I, I do feel like that. I often felt I'd like to be... Do you know what this happened? Wait a minute. There's Doris Stokes, right? Now, Doris, you must have met in your life, since, well, since you announced this talent that you have, you must have met so many people who say, I think I've lived before, you know, right? I have met a million, but have you noticed they've all been the Queen of Egypt? Yes. Uh, and uh, <laughs> nobody ever swept the floor at Singer Sewing Machine Factory. <laughs> you noticed that? I met them all, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that's what I mean. I think this time around, if all those spiritual people are right and that you do come back and you do get another crack at it until you get it right, I think this is my first time in. <laughs> because it's a gas. I mean, I must say, I do like it. I wouldn't mind being a beetle or a cockroach, but I wouldn't like to make love to another one. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>... <laughs>
<laughs> that's awesome. And, <laughs> and nowadays you got people saying that they are born in the wrong uh, generation. You sure about that? I don't know, man. I don't know. What with 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 all the stuff that we've checked out, man. I I don't I don't ever I would never want to go back. No. Like I would like uh, because of how far back could we go speaking English? We found that out. It was like Yeah, yeah. Today 1600s, we found out. Like yeah, like about the 16 or yeah, something about about like, that 1600s. And, and it's like what's going on in that time and I'm like, eh, yeah, we're better off right now. Yeah, we're not we're not to shit in buckets yeah, and yeah. Live old, past age 35. Yeah, good old penicillin. Yeah. You know, <laughs> an age after penicillin is is what I would try to shoot for. And hand washing. Yeah, you 100%. Know? Yeah. <laughs> did, did you want to ask me something, love? Um, what do you do with groupies? Well. On a Thursday. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll whip out my willy. <laughs> that gives him a laugh. I'll whip it out. I say, there you go. I say, how'd you like them apples? And he get up and say, no thanks, I'll smoke my own. thing about it comedians don't get groupies <laughs> oh, don't feel sorry for me well i've done quite well you've probably read about it in the paper <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> comedians get guys telling them jokes oh. <laughs> hey bill hey come here man hey hey come here hold me a minute darling you stay there <laughs> None in the four L stations. <laughs> Clean up music in your act. Oh, <laughs> that makes uh, sense. That makes makes sense, sense, right? It makes sense. Like we don't get groupies. We just get people de telling, <laughs> suggesting videos to us. Yeah. Pestering oh. us about it in the DMs of, you know, oh, Instagram man. and Patreon. Oh man, both. And they won't let up. Oh my God, love it. It's just like ah. holy shit. Yeah. Um, but it's so true. If if you find someone funny out there, guess what? I am sending that to you. Like, yeah, because I, I know my sense of humor is jacked up and all kinds of broken. So yeah. I will send it to you first before that ever <laughs> I ever send it to my wife. Yeah, like, ever. <laughs> You're gonna clear it with me, <laughs> and my <laughs> reaction is. Is what you use to determine if you're going to send it to Holly? <laughs> no, no, never, never, never. I send it to you on like uh, the first. I'm like, oh, that was funny. I want to send that to the fucking Spencer. And then I'm like, <laughs> then I get to think about it. I was like, oh, I shouldn't send that to Holly. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> the I'm the buffer, is what yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, while the humor is still processing, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'll send it to you like uh. I'll laugh out loud. And then I'll send it to you while I'm still laughing. <laughs> And then after I'm done laughing, I'm like, you know what? That probably wouldn't be good to send to Holly. <laughs> Maybe that's a podcast episode. Yes. We go through our DMs of each other <sighs> and we share what it is that we Bro, find funny. Yes. Yes. And that will be the conclusion of the podcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I never end in line of blocks. It's, it's appalling. And yet I've met some pimple-ridden Herberts <laughs> who were in the charts, big queues of gorgeous women at the door. I've never understood it. I never will. I'm erudite. I'm urbane. I know a word or six. <laughs> I'm not scared. I'm a brave person. Look, fuck, 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 fuck. I want to tell you. <laughs> I'm a brave person. <laughs> I'm strong. <laughs> I tried my very best. But look, I'm going to leave you 
And I'm going to leave you with a complaint. <laughs> this country is in a terrible state, according to some people, and I know why. Now, you blamed it on lots of things, and all unemployment, and the value of the pound, and all sorts of other magic things. It's because the national anthem is boring. <laughs> no, no! Don't get me wrong. I'm not arguing with the lyrics. <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> but not them all. I mean, I think the Queen should be saved. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> And if anybody's going to save her, God's the very chap. <laughs> Who am I to rock the boat? Not I. Nice person. Show business personality. Right? <laughs> it's an appalling song. And it's racist. It is anti-Scottish. And the fourth verse is all about Marshall Wade coming up to give us a belt in the mouth. And I don't like it. And with a mighty rush, rebellious Scotch to crush. Oh, do you bloody think so? <laughs> I don't see any rush to hand and to crush anybody. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> no. You see, if you when you look at the Olympic Games, we are going with a flag. We've been lapped. The games haven't started yet. <laughs> These emergent nations are coming. Out. <laughs> right. We come from Jubilovia and we don't give a shit. <laughs> We've got a national debt of 50 squillion pounds. We will get the monkeys. God <laughs> save. All the other nations don't want us to win. Because when we win, it takes half an hour and a flag out the bloody <laughs> Under Daily Thompson scratch and goes, <laughs> season up. <laughs> so I think it's time for a change. And I think a refreshing change would be to use a theme from the archers. <laughs> what? Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. <laughs> Can you imagine it? Trooping of the colour. <laughs> the Queen sitting in a horse like that. Public and the seat's gone rum de 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 <laughs> So let's give it a bash here. One, two, three. I'll get one of them in the bedroom. <laughs> I'm more of the same. Yeah. So. <laughs> One, two, three. Now, you, now, just think. Now, that's going to be the lyrics. We're not going to change a thing. It's going to be. Rumpty dumpty dumpty dum. La 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 la. Rumpty bum 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 bum. Dumpty diddly dum. Just think the new immigrants can learn that on the bus and away in from Heathrow. Rumpty diddly dum. You go off the bus, you know the bloody national anthem! <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to my inane drivel. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. You've made a happy man very old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like that, man.
The show is now over. <laughs> you have wasted your breath. <laughs> shouting more and more and more. <laughs> more and more, Bill, for twas wonderful. <laughs> Lay another wee funny one line it upon us. <laughs> it is not to be. Waste, waste not your energy. You'll only be fed up when you get to the chip shop and find it I'm first in the queue. <laughs> Nice one. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't put, uh, uh, end it at the first one. I wanted I, so I see that saw that joke. Yeah, I I absolutely love that that closing line. You've made a uh, uh, happy man very old instead of you made <laughs> an old man very happy. Uh -huh. I love that. <laughs> and you know, uh... man, that last little bit when he was complaining about no groupies and a new national anthem. He had Ringo Starr in the audience and didn't even ask his opinion. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, my guy? Yeah. Other oh. than that, it was a funny ass stand up special. I, I love this. This was entertaining, man. This is I'm I'm here for these things, man. Stand up, stand up week. I love stand up week. Hell yeah. You know, yeah. I'm here for it, man. I love yeah. that. I love you know, that. You know, I think it was a great idea to mix up the uh oh. the Saturdays. Yeah. 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 I feel yeah. like Billy is someone we could all just chill out to and listen because he is he is the god tier storyteller man. Yeah, the one of the greatest the UK has ever produced. One hundred one, uh, like uh, top three of uh, Scotland in particular. Oh probably man, probably the top one. Yep. The yeah. what, what are they calling the Big Yin? Yeah, what do they call him? I think <laughs> I so. Love that. Yeah. love that dude. Yeah, this is like 60, 70, 80 thumbs oh, up. This is all of them. This 80, is great. 85 thumbs up because that was the uh, year this came out. Yep. Yep. 100%, man. I like that. I like that. Oh, man. It just, it just, it was nice. It was nice. It was nice just to listen to him do his thing, dude. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. Whew. Thanks for your patrons, y'all. Keep the lights on. Wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck. Unplug and do something epic, guys. And take your incontinence pants off first. <laughs> yes. Later, y'all. Later. <laughs>